Lucy Sims, and we are back with more Cinderella phenomenon. This is actually very good. I enjoyed this so far. Um, so we're just kind of getting into it. Um, we haven't really gotten. We've met kind of all of our romancy characters so far. Uh, we haven't gotten into any kind of choices that would determine a route. I mean, I'm sure some choices here and there, are like kind of bing, 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 give you points for a certain person um, and help you. But obviously, we. Our first playthrough, we're not using a guide, so we're going to hope we get a good ending. And I'm not sure for the characters how the endings work. So I don't know in this game if it's a... Uh, obviously, there's a good ending. But I don't know if there's like like some other games where there's a good ending. There's a normal ending, which is always bad. And then there's multiple bad endings. I don't know if this is like just good ending, bad ending. Or if it's good ending and five bad endings, six bad endings. Like, whatever. We'll figure it out after we do our first playthrough. But anyway... Um, and the recommended play order from the developers was to do Rod first. So that's kind of what we're going to try to go for when we have options where we know we can choose him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm assuming there's going to be points because there usually isn't a game where you can choose a person to talk to or whatever. Um, so we'll try to choose Rod whenever possible. Uh, and when we have choices with him, we're going to try to use, do the best we can. I don't know. Um, he hates us though. So this is going to be difficult. Amnesia Casanova was allowed to stay in the marsh end with the other boarders. Yeah, and I gotta figure out, because he's really got the... He's more the ladies' man, and he should have that kind of... But I've already kind of given that to Karma, so I gotta figure out... I gotta balance their voices. I gotta figure out, because I don't want them... But then again, I suppose the Casanova could have more of it... Well, or Rumple, we know. Could still have the quiet, bookish voice. I could have the quiet, bookish voice, but... Hey, if you want to date me later. Like, I don't know. I got to figure that out. Because that's usually the the ones that have more flair and are usually a little flirty usually have the fantastic voice. But but that also seems like a karma voice. So I'm not really sure what we're going to do there. They're both a little dramatic seeming to me. So I don't want them to have the same voice. I don't, I don't know. We got, we're working on it. We're working on it. You know, we work on the voices as we go. Rod's easy. He's quiet. <laughs> he's... It's quiet because he doesn't talk, and then he's got a bunny on his shoulder, which we haven't quite gotten the voice for the bunny, but it's only spoken to us once, so whatever. Um, anyway, yeah, so Casanova was allowed to stay in the Martian with the other boarders because he still seemed capable. Parface uh, set him to work as one of the Martian's servers. Anissa's protest that he remained in bed fell on deaf ears. Parface couldn't very well throw him out, not while well knowing that he, had, that he had nowhere to go. I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spouts at us. The people that frequent the Martian begin to steadily ignore me altogether. Like I do not exist. It's better than the stares and the hateful looks. Rumble, you aren't here to flirt. But this lovely lady is unattended. Maybe he'll have the... I will have the slightly deeper voice. This lovely lady is unattended. Yes, there we go. He would normally have our kind of... Psh, whatever, because he's got the glasses, but he's a flirt. So I I don't know what to do with him. He's two different tropes in one, and I don't know how to process this. But applaud the game. He's not glasses asshole. He's glasses McFlirty Pants, and I can't... I don't know what to do. We have a Flirty Pants, and you have a McGlasses asshole. Together! Into one! We took the asshole part out, but... It's gotta have kind of the... I don't know. Sir Rumble, please, you're making me blush! Because the man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumple. I think it suits him. I'll never understand Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. I've returned! I can't help- like, what was- His voice was more like, that's nowhere to treat a lady. I've returned. He's gonna have more of the- we gotta- he's gotta have more of the, uh- the Lupin kind of voice, because he's a little fabulous, so. Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to take care of. He, girl. Waltz trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run that errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contents. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you've survived the trip, Waltz. Waltz. 
you both. Thank you, Anise. Oh, God. It's going to be fun and awkward. So this is our new housemate. We have not yet had the opportunity to meet. I am... Oh, my God. This is gorgeous. I'm sorry. He's like, you are the most beautiful thing. Like, I'm a dude. Ah! But he's pretty and he's dressed like a girl and you're crazy. And you're like, oh, my God. I'm just going to, like, squeeze in between and be like, hi. This going to be the peanut butter and jelly in the middle of this man sandwich. <laughs> this face has got fucking issues. We're all surprised when Rumple suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you've entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly than you. I am Rumple, my sweet... Let us talk of marriage. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer, my angel. I beg of you. Keep. Say the word and it's done. You are filthy hands off of me. Ow! Not again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating. Like the one you gave to me. My queen, there's no need for violence. <laughs> I was just like, what did you call me? Like, we look like... And then I just realized he's like a fucking queen. He really is a fucking queen right now. Like, that's great. Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> oh, this game amuses me. What did you call me? Please calm down. Rumple is still recovering. What's going on? <laughs> Karma is a man. Doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. Or proposed to. She is a man. But your voice, your face... Your breasts. Ow! And that's what you're focusing on, pervert. I worship all aspects of the female form, but my particular favorite has always been... Ow! Do yourself a favor and shut up. I never would have known. But why would he do this? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Fairy tale curse. Is it because of your curse? Yes. I. I am undone. No, now you're gay. <laughs> it's like, I am not! Well, you might be. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. <laughs> I fucking love these two. I can't wait to go down their paths. They're great. Uh, for those that can hear the music of their of their heart like I, it only takes a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Yeah, until the next pretty lady shows up. The Martian attracts all sorts, doesn't it? And that one is entirely Parfait's fault. All right. Um, all right, all right. Nothing to see here. Back to work. I'm still in shock from what I learned earlier. Karma, a man. It's not fair that he's so beautiful as a woman. If the female population of Angeal knew the truth, Karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. And he's being good, I suppose. We've had a, spe a special lunch to welcome the newest Martian boarders. We've all been invited to the private dining room. Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Prince Rod, perfect timing. Please join us for lunch. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry and have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come join us. Please, Your Highness. I've made too much, as usual. You must help us finish. Very well. 
A cursed princess? And a cursed prince. What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. You're the most eccentric one here, Rumple. Really now? I sit silently in my chair. I'm comfortable around so many people. Even when Mother was alive, I had all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. I mean, you kind of look at it and you hear, when things come out, you're like, well, your mother was kind of a bitch. She kind of made you a shut-in. You don't know how to talk about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're still a bitch. But I understand the shy, awkward weirdness around people because your mom kind of did that to you. But <sighs> The meals with Ophelia and her children were also always awkward and silent. Somehow the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Is something wrong? Excuse me? You've barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolores said this was one of your favorites. I'm just not used to eating with company, that's all. And they say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. God, why are you pretty? So pretty. Garland. Yeah, I apologize. Closer together, huh? So, have you made any progress on how to do those good deeds, princess? I literally just got here, bitch. There's no way I'm admitting that I don't even know how to complete one. Oh, I forgot. You're not so good on the doing good front. You're not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to do good? What? Well, that's not something you hear every day. As in, take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own... You should ask someone to give you some advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. <laughs> What's this I hear? The princess needs advice? Well then, she is in luck. I happen to give the most excellent advice. And believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. The princess is indeed lucky, as I am available for teaching duties. No. I love you, but no. No doubt I'd be the better choice, as I don't go about deceiving the world. Excuse me? From one-sided flirting to bitter enemies, and all in the span of a few hours. The man broke my heart. <laughs> the drama queens, I love them both. Anyways, I'd also be happy to help you in any way I can, princess. I'm sure your stepbrother would be happy to help as well. I don't think that would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. I don't think I would make the best... Okay. I only teach others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Jurian herself still struggles to be good. What? You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Hmm? Why are you all willing to help me? That's what we do with the Martian. We help each other. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping whenever one can. Just let any of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. This is what Mother in the last few years have taught me. I've always been alone and it's easier that way. And yet, we strangers... These people that I've only known for a few days are so willing to help me when they'll gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I've forgotten how to do so? I'm slowly beginning to understand what I must do. Unlearn everything. The decision. Tick-tock! Tick-tock! I don't see why this is necessary. Of course this is necessary, princess. You work to show you can be useful. For the last half hour, Parfait and Delora have been debating what chores they want to give me. I cannot believe they're seriously going to make me work like a commoner. No freeloaders at the Marchen, remember? And you can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're... Oh, anymore now you're a homeless peasant! Being demoted to a homeless peasant's not my fault. 
If you really think about it, it was kind of me. It was kind of me to demote you. Stop teasing her, Delora. Spacey's had a lot thrown at her already. I'm only speaking the truth. Besides, working to live is the commoner's way of life. But at least it's rewarding. Not really. <laughs> but if you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You're no longer a princess, Spacey. Life here at the Martian is comfortable, and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. What you do is your choice, princess. Do I even have a choice? Not really, no. Let's see. How about cooking duties? No way. She'd burn a salad. She could be a receptionist. Then we'd lose all of our customers. That's... That's probably true. I am right here, you know. Sorry. Do you have any useful skills at all, aside from being a bitch? No. As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They clean my room, help me dress. I'm expected to possess skills for things I've never done. Aha! Hmm? I found the perfect job for her Cinderella cleaning. Ta-da! Spacey will be in charge of sweeping the Martian floors. What? Perfect. Even she should be able to do that. Could you, princess? I refuse. But, but look! Even I even put a cute little ribbon on the bottom just for you. It's your very own special broom. A princess does not clean. Hard-headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. Suddenly the broom flies into my hands. I'm pulled helplessly along as the thing begins to sweep the floors. I try to pull my hands away, but they must be must as well be glued oh they may as well be glued to the broom. They don't budge. What have you done? You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Delora, isn't this a little too much? Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping. And it will not stop until the floors are spotless. What? Oh, come on, Parfait. We've got time. We've got time for a cup of tea. But... She'll be fine. A little sleeping never killed anyone. You are dreadful. Enjoy your time with Mr. Broom. Wait. Did they really just leave? Hey, s slow down. The broom begins to sweep faster. Despite my protests, I'm still forced, like a puppet, to sweep the floors with a grudging tenacity. What's up, buddy? See a bird outside? He's like freaking the fuck out flying all over the place. <laughs> I love it! I can barely catch my breath after that. Princess, Parfait sent me to check. How lovely! It's so clean I can see my reflection on the floorboards. I'm impressed. Do not even think about stepping into this room with your dirty shoes. Goodness, I didn't know princesses could be such terrifying creatures. You're aware that the Martian is opening soon, yes? The floor isn't going to stay clean forever. Then do not open the Martian. I do sympathize with you, princess. It's difficult adjusting to the commoner's life. What would you know about that? More than you think. What? Oh, did I let that slip? That was my mistake. Karma just smiles at me, his eyes gleaming with playful mischief. He's definitely hiding something. I mean, something, some things. My hands are red and sore from all the sweeping I've done today. I remember the saw the niece offered me when I first woke up in my room. Surely that'll help somewhat. I apply it to my hands and find, to my surprise, that it is very effective. Most of the redness quickly fades along with the pain. This is what will my... This is what my... Is this what my life will be like if I don't break the curse? 
forced to work day in and day out. I know it sucks to be a commoner, right? Because I'm not going to lie, forced to work day in and day out. Oh, I'm already depressed thinking i got to go back to work. I cannot let things stay as they are. I must act. I lay down to rest. Tiredness falls upon me like a heavy, suffocating blanket. I close my eyes and feel myself shift into the darkness of sleep. Despite having slept for hours, I'm still tired when I awake. I glance back at my hands and remember the solve's effectiveness. Whatever Anise gave me really works. I should sure ask her to make me more. I feel like this is not the last time I'll need it. I must act quickly. The sooner I break the curse, the better. People who offered to help me are all here. Whom should I ask for help? Okay, we're going to ask Rod because... He hates us the most, and we're supposed to go down his path, so I'm assuming we should ask him first, so. Boop. Rod came to the Martian today to discuss something with Parfait. This is just the third time he's visited the tavern since I've been here. I wonder what he discusses with Parfait. Rod's eyebrows furrow as soon as he sees me enter the room. Oh, it seems like the princess is something she would like to speak with you about, Prince Rod. She probably already knows why I'm here. Thank you, Prince Rod, for telling me about this. I shall leave you with the princess now. He hates us so much. Oh my god, this is going to be the hardest pet. Maybe this is... But, I mean, this is... The game developer on the page in the Steam, it says the recommended route order is Rod, and then Karma, then Rumple. I think. I don't know. So, I mean, this, this is the route order we're going with, so... I mean, I suppose we could go Rumple or Karma, like, either one, but I feel like if they give you a recommended play order, that's what you should kind of go with, so... Rod's expression turns grim. He clearly disapproves of me, even just being in the same room as him. As soon as Parfait leaves, he shoots a glare in my direction. Not gonna lie, I want to go down Karma's route first. I really do. Like, I really want to know his, what his fucking deal is, but I'm going with the recommend. What do you want? All I've done is enter the room and he's already angry. I'm still not used to being treated like this by him. I'm here to ask you about goodness. You're asking the wrong person, Spacey. Did I make the right choice in choosing to come to him? I do not intend to help you break your curse, no matter what Lady Parfait says. Pardon? Emmeline and my mother have tried to be kind to you many times, but you only ever responded with disrespect and cruelty. Cruelty? You think I've been cruel to them? How else would you describe your behavior? Why am I suddenly the one at fault? They're coming to the palace made my life miserable. I'm the victim here, not them. The others may think you're capable of goodness, but I severely doubt it. I do not wish to work with you, so don't come to me for help. Excuse me. He turns around and begins to walk away, leaving me to stand alone in the room, even angrier than I was before. How dare he treat me like this! I grab his arm and pull him around so that he's facing me. I refuse to let him belittle me like this, especially when I'm making a conscious effort to change. What if I can help you break your curse? Will you help me then? Rod fixes me with an icy stare as he pulls away. And then that would just be proving that people are only help you when they're out to get something. I mean, technically, everybody here, we're going to help you break your curse so that you help me break... That's all everybody's doing. So that's just reinforcing her... Whatever. I don't intend to break my curse. What? Rod shoots me one last glare before he leaves the Martian, leaving me to stand there confused. Doesn't he have, like, the Little Mermaid curse? Right? Or, like, because he lost his voice? He's got the... Isn't that what... Isn't he the mermaid curse? Like the little mermaid? Like, it's because he's a merman. And so he, if he breaks his curse, he'll have to go back to the sea and be a merman. I don't want him to break his curse either then, right? If he doesn't intend to break his curse, then why is he even here? I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between the floorboards. The wood beneath my feet is covered in a thick muck. <laughs> The fucking broom! The fucking broom is just slowly encroaching on the corner. Like, I was like, oh god. She's like, oh my god, the floor. And I was like, where's the broom? And it just slowly fucking peeks in. Fucking love this. Oh no. Stop! 
I never thought I'd see this. The princess is actually sweeping. I'd say it's more like the broom is sweeping and the princess is just along for the ride. Lady Parfait, your orders have arrived. Where should I put them? At the back, please. Thank you. I glare at Garland as he begins to move. You! You're dirtying the floor! Sorry? Garland dashes across the floor with long steps in an attempt to leave as few footprints as possible. This was Delora doing. Delora's doing, wasn't it? Is it obvious? This has witch having fun written all over it. I need water. Wow, completely spotless. You are the worst. <laughs> we made the brooms out. Don't be mad at the broom, princess. It's only trying to help. It's doing nothing but making my life miserable. Lady Parfait, I must speak with you. I look up at the witch that's just entered. She's a regular she's a regular at the Martian, according to the Parfait and Delora, a good witch and according to Parfait and Delora, a good witch. She orders tea here from time to time. She has mud on her shoes. Why is she glaring at me like that? I believe it's because of your shoes, dear. Just cleaned the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean up after myself right away. Good. The princess is something else. I've never seen a witch so frightened of someone before. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, she scares me too. The witch hurriedly cleans up the tracks she made coming in before going to speak with Parfait. Even though Parfait says that Delora and this witch is good, I don't trust her judgment. Especially not when she considers Delora, who ruined my life, good person. I put the broom back in its resting place before double-checking my work. Now that I'm done, I can continue to work on breaking my curse. Whom should I ask for help today? We're going to stalk Rod. I glance over at Rod as he enters the tavern. That was almost perfect timing. He told me that he doesn't intend to break his curse. Yet here he is again. Rod must sense my eyes on him because the minute he walks in, he turns to look at me. His expression is as cold and unmoving as always. He pointedly leaves the tavern area and enters the reception. I follow after him. I told you to find someone else. What can I do to make you stop hating me? What? You said that whatever I had done to you or your family was bad. So if I reverse that, I might get a good deed. You truly don't understand how goodness works, do you? I'd not be asking you if I did. Rod closes his eyes and rubs the back of his neck. He looks thoughtful, but also irritated. I intend to break my curse as soon as possible, and I'll do whatever it takes. And it seems to me that the easiest way to achieve a good deed is to fix the supposedly bad things I've already done. So are you going to help me or not? You're being a bitch about it, though. Tell Lady Parfait I will see her another time. He leaves the room without answering my question. I ball my hands into fists. And he calls me the cruel one. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, so-and-so, Rod will help you. He's really good. Really? Because I asked him for help, and he basically told me no, so he's being an asshole, so maybe you should give him the Cinderella curse. On top of his fucking mermaid curse. A month has passed, and I've yet to complete even one good deed. Not for any lack of trying, though. I've been asking around for advice on how to be a good person and resolve various and receive various answers. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. I think it's important that you consider another person's feelings. Mm -hmm. Those are both all kind of the same. Patience. The ability to soothe even the most broken of hearts. Forget I asked. Bravery. Loyalty. You must be beautiful, both on the inside and out. Maybe that's why you're beautiful on the outside, because you're not beautiful on the inside? Is that what you're trying to say? I don't know. Right. Must I be all of those things in order to be good? According to Parfait, I can't just pretend. It has to come from my heart. Place my hand on my chest and consider the steady pulse of my heartbeat. That will not be easy. 
I closed my eyes, thinking of all the possible ways I might be able to break my curse. But in the end, my mind is blank. Mother, what am I supposed to do? A dream? Your personal feelings are nothing but a weakness for others to exploit. And that's why you do not show them. You only show them that you're strong. Yes, Mother. You must not let false kindness deceive you. People will use niceties to trick you into exploiting your weak emotions. But you can trust me, Spacey. I will never hurt you. I will never lie to you. I am all you need. I love you, Spacey. I love you too, Mother. How are those lessons of yours going? I hope you're not giving, it any, giving anyone a difficult time. I'm the only one having a difficult time. Have you tried pairing up with someone? Pairing up? Some of the people in the tavern pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better than one, as they say. It's not a bad idea, but the problem is with her. Who's going to volunteer to pair up with the Ice Princess? She has a point. People may not glare at me anymore, but it doesn't escape me that I'm still disliked. I mean, like, Waltz doesn't, like, dislike us. Karma doesn't dislike us. Rumpel doesn't dislike anybody. Especially with a vagina. I'm just saying. We dislike him. Um. Most of the boarders at the Martian volunteered to help her, remember? And I haven't heard any of them retract their offers. It's only a matter of time. Stop it, Delora. It's your choice, princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. So pairing up with someone or would pairing up with someone really help me break my curse? What if they end up being an annoyance instead? Princess? Um, excuse me, princess? I'm sorry for disturbing you, but you've just been staring at your tray and the customer is waiting for his order. Of course. Dolor has me helping in East today. The Martian is unexpectedly busy and they can't keep up with all the customers. Stop daydreaming, Spacey. Food doesn't deliver itself. I do not need you to tell me that. I mean, even if you, like, started being nicer to the other people around you, I doubt she'd ever be nice to Delora. Like, fuck you! You're gonna put me in this! You're gonna be the last person I'm nice to. I stretch out on my bed. A stiff mattress does little to soothe my aching muscles. I was on my feet the entire day, struggling to keep up with the steady stream of people that came into the Martian. I've ne never seen the Martian this busy. I roll into my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Why don't you pair up with someone? Pairing up might not be such a bad idea. Oh, ho, ho. oh, oh, look at that. Wow, look at, he looks so good. Look at Karma. Look at how fucking gorgeous his eyes are. But like, look, like it looks so good in the dark and then you're like the beautiful light. And of course we can't do, so is Fritz and that's Walt. We're going to pick Rod because you know what I mean? So that's cool. This was, I think, what forces you onto their path. So perfect. Not saying we're gonna get an ending, but we get to pet. Okay. A change of pace. I want Rod to help me because he hates me, and I want to make him angry. Kind of douchey of us to be like he hates me, so I'm gonna force myself on him. I'll ask Rod if he'll pair up with me. I know we don't have a good relationship. Rod has spared no effort in telling me how cruel I've been to his family. But I feel that rectifying whatever mistakes I made with him might be an easy way to get three good deeds. Oh, this is going to be very interesting. But Spacey, didn't he tell you that he didn't want to break his curse? Yes, that may not be the whole truth. He's still reluctant to break his curse despite the advice I've offered him. Perhaps you'll be able to encourage him where I could not. I do not care if he does not want to break his curse. I only need him to help me remedy the supposedly bad things I've done to his family. 
I believe that'll be the easiest way to break my curse. The problem is that I rarely see him here. He's usually at the palace. In order for this arrangement to work, I'll need to be in the palace. I, for one, think it's a terrible idea. What if... Dolores' voice trails off. She averts her gaze to the floor, her expression a mixture of anxiety and solemn consideration. What if what? Is there something I should know? Both the witch and the fairy just stare at me silently. After a few moments, Parfait speaks. You would be far away from us, princess. We'd not be able to assist you. Witches could be lying in wait for you, knowing that you're the true crown princess of Angeal. They might seek to use you for their own purposes. What sort of purposes? Why would the witches be after me in the first place? Many of them have been corrupted by the Tenon Brerum. Darkness has invaded their hearts, making them bitter. That kind of sounds like us. Many of them simply want to see the fairy tale curses continue on undisturbed. So a good witch cursed me helping them. Because that just makes you sound like a douchebag and not like a good person. Like I'm just saying. I know I'm an asshole and I deserve this, but also you're kind of an asshole too. So just... Takes one to know one. This is all just speculation, but it's better to be safe than sorry. What would you have me do? Hmm. Delora? I have an idea. I think I can get her into the palace and make sure there's someone there to look out for her. How? Just trust me. Tomorrow, the Ice Princess returns to her palace. I have a bad feeling about this. Hmm? This cannot be happening. Don't dilly-dally. The princess will soon be awake and expecting her new maid. I close my eyes and suppress the urge to groan. How is it that Delora was able to turn me into Emmeline's personal maid? She thought this would be funny, did she? Well, I'll make her pay for this. I expect you not to be late again. We have very strict rules on how the palace staff should behave. Not exactly sure how Delora managed this. She told me she was going to cast a spell on me and that it would be over as soon as I opened my eyes. I closed my eyes and sure enough, when I opened them, I found myself here in a maid uniform. What did she do? The maid continues to babble at me. How annoying. I pretend to listen to her as she leads me through the palace hallways. Emmeline and Rod's chambers are located here. Oh! We come to a halt when Emmeline suddenly appears from around the corner. Your Highness! The maid ducks into a neat curtsy. Emmeline's eyes meet mine. I tense as I wait for any signs of recognition from her, but she only gives me a curious look as if wondering who I am. She clearly does not recognize me. The maid suddenly reaches back and pulls at my shoulder, forcing me into a bow. You're in front of the crown princess of Angeal. Show some respect, girl. My apologies, your highness. She's new and clearly needs to be taught some manners. Excuse me? Oh, please, there's no need for that. What is she trying to achieve by pretending to be kind to a palace maid? Who is she trying to fool? Your highness, this is your new personal maid. Emmeline glances at the maid, looking confused. Why do I need a personal maid? It's by the king's orders, princess. Emmeline turns to look at me again. What is your name? She's talking to you, girl. I scowl at the maid before facing Emmeline. I cannot believe I've fallen so low that I'm now being ordered around by a maid. Spacey. It's nice to meet you, Spacey. I hope we can get along. She's like sickeningly sweet, right? I got diabetes. Doing her voice. When I do not respond, Emmeline's face falls. I... I was just heading to breakfast with my family. Of course, Spacey will escort you to the dining hall. I raise my eyeballs at, eyebrows at the maid, irritated. There's no need for concern. I can get there on my own. I breathe a sigh of relief. I am not here to babysit her. The maid leans forward and whispers something in my ear. I don't know how it is that you landed this position, but you owe the royal family your diligence and respect. If you continue to show disrespect, I'll be having a word with the king. The maid pushes me forward so that I'm forced to stand next to Emmeline. I'd be like, uh, here's the thing. She, it's been a month. She knows she has to do it. She's like, uh, 
fine, I'll go with her. But she's still being a cunty bitch. Even after a month of being forced to work and blah, blah. I can understand her being bitter and angry and like, Urgh. but you know why you're here. You know that you were made and it may suck and you're like, oh, my dignity. I get it. But you shouldn't be, you should have taken a step back with the cuntiness. Like, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little step back. Like, I can understand her being like, ugh, roll my eyes with a follow. Emmeline, uh, I'm a But then you go with her, you're like, ugh, fine, you go, uh, whatever, we're gonna go with her. Uh, 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 you do the mopey teen walk. Oh my god, I'm gonna go with her. But, I mean, you don't just like, what? I'm not doing what you tell me. You should know your place by now, after a month of dealing with this. Not saying you have to be like, happy with it, like, oh, I'll happily go with her. Now you'd be like, ugh. But you'd go with her because you know your motherfucking place. You know? You, it's been beaten into you for a month. This is not like your third day on the job here. It's a month in. You know what I mean? She just simmered down a little bit. She'll escort you to the dining hall, your highness. Her job requires that she follow you everywhere in case you require assistance with anything. But it's almost time for breakfast, P Princess Emmeline. Emmeline frowns and looks at me. I'm so sorry. What is she apologizing for? Good morning! That was fast. Good morning! Seems you've met your personal maid. Daddy. The king's eyes widen as soon as he spots me. You look familiar. Yeah, I look like your wife, dumbass. Does... Does he recognize me? I feel a little tremble in my heart as I consider that hope. Are you not the girl who came to the gates before? I deflate with a soundless sigh. He remembers me as the peasant. You have his eyes and your mother's hair. Oh, this is the first time I'm meeting you as Emmeline's personal maid. What is your name? Spacey. That is a lovely name. We're glad to have you here, Spacey. It is a lovely name. That's a cute name. That's a great name. Stop spacing out. <laughs> King gives me a warm smile. The softness of his gaze makes me angry. He never treated me so kindly when he remembered me as his own daughter. Maybe you'll be happier this way. Maybe you'll learn. You know what? I'd rather stay a commoner than the crown princess because she's a bitch and everybody hates her. Emmeline takes her seat while I walk to stand at the walls beside the other maids and butlers. The door opens and Rod walks inside. He greets the king, Ophelia, and then his sister. He's just about to take his seat when his eyes suddenly fall on me. The shock is apparent on his face. Rod, is something wrong? I see there's a new maid on staff. His tone is almost accusatory. I bristle at his words and I'm about to say something when Ophelia speaks. She's Emmeline's new personal maid, Spacey. Rod stares at me for a few moments, his expression unreadable. Eventually he moves to take a seat. I stand silently and watch the royal family eat their breakfast. Small areas filled with happy conversation. The four of them smile at each other when they speak, and it's easy to see how comfortable they all are with one another. And I was still here. Our meals were always so quiet. Everyone looks so happy now. I bite my lip to will the heavy feeling away. Rod told me that before, but I didn't want to believe him. I turn back to the conversation at hand. We have something very important to discuss with you, Emmeline. Oh? I've brought this up before, but now the matter is more pressing. Is this about... Yes, this is about the ball. Ophelia gives the king a disapproving look. Dear. I know it seems a strange proposition, but this is royal tradition. Emmeline is at a suitable marrying age, and this ball may yet help her find a suitor. But a husband... Emmeline's cheeks are tinted pink. A royal ball for Emmeline? For her to find a husband? I never would have agreed to such a thing. The king never forced me into one because he knew that. I'll not force you into marrying someone you don't love, Emmeline. We agreed on this ball to uphold tradition. All eligible bachelors will be invited in four months' time, and you'll choose the man you want to court you. Yeah, one ball. Okay. And in four months, and we'll go to the ball, and then we'll have an epiphany, and we'll get our curse broken, and oh, look, we'll be the princess again! 
I'm just guessing, right? It's such a setup. Such a fucking setup. I did find my true love through a ball, after all. And then I married your mom, because she died. He glances at Ophelia, who responds with a fond smile. Her expression falls back into something more worried when she looks at her daughter. But... What if I can't choose anyone? We'll throw one ball, as per tra tradition. We'll not force you into another ball if you do not find a good suitor. But we must uphold traditions at least once. Perhaps this will push you to think more about the future. I'll not put any added pressure on you, Emmeline. But I would be happy to see grandchildren before I have to give up my throne. I'm not getting any younger, you know. She's like 12. No, I mean, she's probably like 17 or something. Like, because... You know, like, 16, 17 marrying age, maybe. So, like, we're at least, like, 18, 19, as I'm just saying. Because she was like, <laughs> you didn't force me into one. And I'm assuming Emmeline and her brother are kind of, like, same age. They look like twinsies. But, father! I can tell that the king is trying to make light of the situation. But there's an undertone of seriousness. Emmeline eventually sighs, then slowly nods. I understand. The gaze shifts to Rod to search for a reaction, but his expression is impassive. No reaction at all. Did he know this was going to happen? But... Can I really be the princess the kingdom of Angelia deserves? I feel so unprepared. You're the crown princess of Angel. You must be confident. Maybe she's a little bit old. So maybe she's like a year younger than us, because Rod's two years younger than us. Um... But she's obviously being treated as the older one. You know, it's obviously not like, well, like, we were obviously the crown princess, not because we were older, but we were his natural born daughter. But now that he has stepkids, it would probably fall to the oldest child, which is, I'm assuming, her. Unless Rod is the crowned prince. And they have a crown prince and a crown princess, and that's it. But I assumed we're the crown princess when we got mad hearing about her, because... You know, we don't share that title, so I don't know how it works. Uh, Emmeline looks down, looking genuinely distressed. I... I'm finished. Will you be excused? But, sweetheart, you've barely touched your food. You may. Emmeline stands up and ducks into a quick curtsy before rushing from the room. I do not move until I feel Rod's glare on me. I realize that I'm meant to follow Emmeline. Excuse me. I curtsy and follow after Emmeline. See, we did something nice. Um, okay, we didn't do something nice. We did something proper, like, excuse me and run out of the room. Proper. Good girl. I barely made it a few steps away from the dining hall before the door flies open and Rod is rushing after me. What are you doing here? Guys, I don't know. I want to do the right thing. I really do. Um... Answer him, avoid the question. I feel like we should answer him and be honest. Because I feel like avoiding the question would be bad. Unless we're like, avoid the question. Like, I don't have time for this. I gotta check after your sister. Okay, answer him. We'll just answer him. I'm here to break my curse. You expect me to believe that when you had people offering to help the Martian? Rod's expression changes, anger clearly in his eyes. No, I know why you're really here. What are you talking about? You thought you might take back what's rightfully yours, didn't you? You have no qualms about hurting my family again. First of all, I just want to stop. I know we were a bitch and we were an asshole, but this was my fucking family first, you little cunt fucker. Like, don't even. See, this is why I love the fact that she's evil, because it makes me angry. Like, I get he's mad. Like, you hurt everyone. Like, everyone loved you. We were nice to you. and I He's got some serious fucking issues, too. I get him being mad. Like, you're kind of a bitch. I don't want to help you. And everyone's happier without you around because you're kind of mopey and grumpy. But here's the thing. And he doesn't believe we can change, and I understand that 100%. But you hurt my family. That man in there, that king, that's my fucking family. That's my father. He's just your stepfather. He married your mother. You would still have a family if you never came to this castle. I don't. I have nothing now. So you know what? I'm going to pop you in your face. Like, that's just like... Hey... Oh my god! I'm living in a fairy tale curse right now, and I obviously suck at doing good things, and I'm just gonna die this way. That's why I have to go to work every day. Because I can't be nice. Oh my god. Oh my god, you're so dumb, bird. 
I didn't hear him screaming for a second. I glanced over because he was playing with his rings and he literally got one of them around his head. It's big enough for him to get out, but it's just so funny because he got around his head and he was like, ah, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Dork. Dork bird. Oh my God. Anyway, the likes it's douchey. This was my family first. And I know I'm an asshole and you have every right to be pissed at me and call me an asshole and not want to help me, but do not act like that's not my father in there. Like, Although your father hated you and you kind of hated him. So, I mean, I'm not really sure why you care. Uh, I think she cares more about her crown than she does about her dad and her dad back. But that's what we're here to learn. But still. I stare at him nonplussed by his accusations. I carefully quell the simmering anger inside me. The last thing I want is to be fired before I break my curse. I'm not here to hurt anyone. So stop accusing me of such things. We glare at each other in silence. This is going to be some passionate love that comes between us with her. I hate you. I hate you. Uh, I'm making it out in the corner. I'm just saying. I'd always thought Rod was closed off and quiet, but his emotions are always blazing in his eyes. You shouldn't be here. Rod steps back, but his gaze is still fierce. I do not have time for this. I'm going to find Emmeline. Why? So you can insult her? No, because it's now my job to attend to her. Excuse me. Last place I expect to find Emmeline is in the throne room. Much to my surprise, I find her standing alone inside, staring up at the throne. Oh! When she turns to face me, she has a guilty expression on her face. I'm sorry! What is she apologizing for? It was very rude earlier, walking out on everyone at breakfast. Emmeline gazes back at the throne and sighs. I'm sure any other girl would be happy to have a ball! I mean, it's like something out of a fairy tale. But I... She sighs once again and looks down at her clasped hands. It all sounds so perfect in the fairy tales. Three days is all it takes before everyone's found their true love. But I don't think that's how it works out in real life, do you? I have nothing to say in response when Emmeline turns her beseeching gaze to me. I just... I don't know how I'm supposed to marry someone I barely even know. Is this really what it means to be the crown princess? Isn't this precisely what you wanted? Excuse me? When your mother married the king, you became a princess. You went from rags to riches overnight. I cannot keep the bitterness from my voice when I speak. Your life is playing out like Cinderella's, is it not? All you're missing are the glass slippers, and even then I'm sure the king could arrange for a pair. I cannot understand why you're so unhappy. Neither can I. Emmeline turns away from me to face the throne once more, and in the sun that streams through the windows, I see something shining on her cheeks. Is she crying? I am so ungrateful. Spacey, what would you do? What? If you were in my place, if you became crown princess overnight, would you go through with the ball? For the sake of Angel's tradition? For the sake of your role? I would never do anything so worthless. Oh, girl! I mean, the king never brought up the subject with me. He most likely knew I would have refused. Emmeline suddenly pats her cheeks and turns to me, a wry smile on her face. I could do with some fresh air. Shall we go to my friend's shop in town? I've only just exited the throne room when Emmeline stopped short and I almost bump into her back. Oh! Your Highness, what a pleasant... Sir Mithos abruptly stops to stare at me. Why is Sir Mithos looking at me so intently? Is something the matter, Sir Mithos? Mithros? No, nothing at all. Your Highness, I'm just... Amused. Amused. Oh, you haven't met my new maid! This is Spacey! He fucking knows he's a witch. Oh my god, he's wearing the diamonds, I didn't even realize... I mean, she's got like a little diamond thing on it, but those are like the, they look like the Sims plum bobs, right? But, um, he's wearing them. So he's either a witch or a fairy. Hmm. Spacey. There's something in Sir Mythos's gaze that I do not trust. The silence is stifling, so I curtsy at him. Sir. Charming. Sir Mythros turns his attention back to Emmeline. Where are you off to on this pleasant day? Oh, just off to visit a friend. Make sure you bring your guards with you, princess. Of course. Fritz. 
I wonder what's taking him so long. Emmeline decides to invite Rod to join us on her visit. One of the guards offered to get Rod for her, but he still has yet to return. Another stands with us by the gate, ready to escort us to town. Why, the God, why does the king even keep these incompetent fools if they can't find a single person? Maybe we should go look for Rod. But then, what if he gets here as soon as we go searching for him? I sigh. I will go look for him. You can stay here. But you don't need... But you don't need to run errands for me. She has yet to ask me to do anything. What does she think a maid even does? I look at her solemnly, not answering her. Finally, she relents. Thank you, Spacey. I incline my head just slightly before walking off. I feel like a babysitter. I cannot believe I have to search for Rod. It's only slightly better than being dragged around by that broom. I turn around the corner and nearly bump into someone. I take a few steps back just in time. Princess? I look up in shock. Fritz's surprise mirrors my own. Oh my god, he remembers us. Where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere. He pauses to stare at my clothing. Why are you wearing a maid's uniform? Fritz, you remember who I am? I would never forget you, Princess Spacey. But it does seem like I'm the only one who remembers you. What's going on, Princess? The only people who remember me are the witches, fairies, and... Fritz, are you... I stop when I hear the sound of approaching footsteps. Fritz turns at the sound and then stoops low in a formal bow when he sees Rod. Your Highness. Rod's impassive face twists with annoyance when he sees me. Rod does not even acknowledge Fritz as he walks past him to stop in front of me. Wow! Look who's being a cold bitch! Wow, you call me a cold asshole, huh? Because you're being kind of an asshole to me and you're being an asshole to Fritz. I'm just saying! Practice what you preach, bro. What? Psh. Mic drop. Run away. Stay cursed forever. <laughs> Shouldn't you be attending to my sister? I don't understand. Prince Rod, do you know why the princess is dressed like this? Rod is clearly just as surprised as I am that Fritz remembers me. You recognize her? You remember the princess too? But if you knew... Why didn't you say anything when she first went missing? And can someone explain to me why she's attending to Princess Emmeline? This is... Fritz. I cut him off before he can ask any more questions. I feel Rod's gaze on my back as I turn to look at Fritz. No more questions. But Princess! Right now, I'm a palace maid. A what? It's a long story, and I have no time to explain now. So do not ask... Fritz is clearly discontent. He seems to struggle for a few moments before he finally sighs and nods. Then, your highness. Though it's nice to hear someone speak my title, will not do if Fritz calls me that an accident. It's just spacey for now. But... I turn to face Rod. Emmeline is waiting. What? The card could not even deliver her message. Where are you going? Emmeline wants to visit her friend's shop in town, and she wants you to go with us, Rod. Town? Ordinarily, I would not mind Fritz joining us, but right now we might just be un unnecessary co company. He may very well give me away. Rod barely wants to speak with me when it's just the two of us. I doubt Fritz would make him more sociable. I'm assuming that accompanying you is not an option at this point. Yes. Fritz looks down for a moment before looking at Rod. I'm sorry to ask this of you, your highness, but since she refuses to let me do so, please look after Princess Spacey in my place. Ha <laughs> ha! In your face! You gotta deal with me! We're so forcing ourselves on him, it's a little rapey. Like, okay, we're not, like, physically touching him, but it's like, we are just, like, so invading up his shit. He's like, oh my god, you're so invasive and annoying. Ridiculous. I don't need to be coddled. Even if I did, Rod couldn't care less if I'm hurt. I'll do my best, Sir Fritz Gerald. I cannot tell if he's being genuine or not. Fritz bows to the both of us. Stay safe, Pr Spacey. And you, your highness. Rod turns and begins to walk away without another word. 
Come on. Crowd is silent as we make our way back to the palace gates. I'm still thinking about what he said to Fritz earlier. Why would Rod agree to Fritz's request? Because he just wanted him to leave? I stare at Rod's back as he walks in front of me. Sometimes I cannot figure out what he's thinking. Rod! Spacey! Caroline beams when she catches sight of us. Are you ready? Red crosses, Rod crosses his arms. He doesn't look very happy with his sister. Even though Rod is younger, I cannot help but think that he often sounds like the older of the two. I'm busy, Emmeline. I can't keep dropping everything whenever you want to leave the palace. I'm sorry, but I just really needed some fresh air today. I get plenty of fresh air on the palace grounds. I felt I needed to be off the palace grounds. Emmeline's face drops as she looks down at that ground. Rod lets out an exasperated sigh before stepping inside the carriage. Come on. Rod? Just for an hour, okay? Thank you! I'm wondering if she can't leave the grounds without him. Maybe that's part of his curse, and that's why he doesn't want to break his curse, because something will happen to his sister. Um, I soon come to realize that it's easier to walk... Oh, oh, we're over time, so I'm going to wrap this up. I'll, I'll read this part in the next. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.